Okay, welcome. This is the second video in the career series, as it were. This is the Builders Cup. So this is the second, um, well, it's the practical performance one. So this is your second series, really, you're going to do most likely if you're doing the career mode. You've got 10 cars to choose from. One of them is a pay one. Um, I've done a load of testing and tuning. The Hyundai there, that's the best one to get. I can't see that the premium car that you'd have to pay any extra for extra four would be a lot better maybe as a standard car so you can see i've got the 167,000 credits there i bought my car same format as before i'll just show you the sort of quickest way to get your car points uh get it to a level where you can put a decent tune on it so it's usable online um, and also get through the cup as quick as you can so that's another one that you've won and try and get the maximum amount of credits along the way as easily as possible um, I have got on on there there I have got a B class tune for it as well as a C class and you can see here I'm just using the points that you get uh, when you start off just to do the first the first round so it's literally just whack on exhaust and that only thing you can really tune is the tyres, which you can see I've done. Uh, I did alter the settings so that it weren't showing metres and kilometres an hour as well, uh, which you'll see later on. So anyway, yeah, you start off, get your car, use up your car points that you get at given to you. Like I say, I think I used an exhaust and a bit of an air filter there. That's the best thing to do. This car has got pretty good standard suspension and when you do come to tune it if you just buy the sort of uprated suspension rather than the fully adjustable with your car points that's plenty good enough for at least for doing this series uh, same as i did on the last one i've done my qualifying i've looked at what my time was um, compared to the other drivers and then i've altered the difficulty so that I've got a chance of doing one or two overtakes and getting some extra car points for that to build the level up quicker but also so I can come high enough up in the races so that I can just do one run through and basically win the championship and that's that marked off so that's what I'm doing there just comparing the times so depending on the track um, how good I am at it and what my car level is at the time depends on what level I set it obviously I'm setting my fuel there as well usually you want to have a little bit more fuel in than what the amounts of laps is because sometimes they can run out especially when you've done a lot of tuning and changing stuff um, yeah so I, I'm, you, you got your thing on the grid usually I try and set it to where I would be on the grid according to my competition for that time and obviously with it being the first round I wanted to make sure I got a good good start to the championship uh, yeah there's a bit of a douchebag there on the right hand side in the Subaru um, ramming people I uh, don't quite know what's happened there it looks like I've lost a bit of the flipping footage but anyway so I did the first race um, flown around I've got myself up to first place and obviously this is the last lap I could have swore I'd put a little bit more of the race on but I've just literally put all the clips together and I'm now just narrating over it because that just seems to be the easiest way to do it because I had quite a good number of clips what with all the tuning bits and everything else so you can see at the end of doing the practice doing the first race I've got the car up to level five first in the championship and yeah just flip through all this so easy get your credits built back up again at the end of this series you'll have enough money as well to buy yourself a really good car that will get you high up on the tables um, so yeah we're going for lime rock as the next one so i've got my extra car points see so I had a little bit of a flick through see what I could do brakes it's handy getting the first brakes because that gives you some adjustment then to fine tune them which can up your stopping uh, lower your stopping distances quite a bit always good to get at least one 
adjustable anti-roll bar as well so you can dial in the oversteer and understeer to how you prefer it so I'd always recommend that fairly early on and the performance index of your car if you whack it higher then the car, the other driver's cars will go up as well so there's no real incentive to try and get your performance index up to 600 because if you leave it at 500 for example most of your competition's cars are going to be 500 so you won't really be at a disadvantage um, the only time you'll work at a disadvantage is if you try and add ballast or something to a standard car to put it in a lower category the other cars won't do that but if you if you're staying at the base the base level that the car comes out you can see here i'm just using up checking whether it's worth putting some lighter wheels on i'm guessing there or having a look at what they look are I, I don't know but yeah, I mean, this is on a clean profile, so if you were starting the game from scratch and you did what I did in the first video, the intro cup, and then went on to this and went through as efficiently as you could, this is pretty much how it's going to roughly play out. Obviously, it might be a little bit worse if you're a lower skill level than me because you'll have to turn the AI down so you won't get as many car points and you won't get as many credits. Likewise, if you're better than I am, you'll be able to turn the difficulty level up. So at the end of it, you'll have more credits and more skill. Looks like I've already done my practice here. Uh, obviously setting the tyres and all that uh, fuel again. Uh, other thing worth noting is with your tyre pressures and that, sometimes when you go to a different track, uh, even if you've left the whole car the same that will actually alter your stopping distances and your acceleration just altering the pressure slightly because some tarmac's obviously grippier than other tarmac not always the case but sometimes like if you're online or whatever on a fairly stock car it might be worth just giving it a little tweak Sometimes that simulator thing on the side there, though, what gives you your stopping distances, not always that accurate. I've had cars with a really low stopping distance, and then when you're in the race, it, it doesn't seem that great. But, I mean, that's all you've got to go on. So, certainly with this particular car, it seemed to be fairly accurate. Um, so, yeah, that was all right. Uh yeah just trying to quickly just give you an idea of the tuning on later videos because you can see what i'm doing i'm just going through the settings either way just to see if i can improve the stats probably on the next video i do um i won't bother doing that anymore i'll just flip and get straight into it and go from there because you know i'm not I'm not spending ages working out exactly what the ideal parts and everything are to use because the idea is just to flip and get in there, get through the series as quick as you can and try and get yourself the most car points and get yourself the most credits as you can. That's it. That's it. And obviously get the win so you get any achievements or whatever. But, you know, the, unless you really like racing against AI, the real racing is online or, or doing your rivals laps. But at the same time, it's still nice to create to beat the career mode and it's also good if you're going to do the career mode to try mode to try and get yourself the best car that might actually be usable uh, for your rivals laps and also for your racing so that's what my aim is uh, some douche flipping hit me from behind there so yeah I'm making use of the rewinds Obviously, in online racing and on your your rival slaps, you're not going to have that opportunity. And a lot of these AI cars are actually replicating the people who were online in real life, how they drove. And I can tell you how I know that's quite accurate, because someone who I actually play with... Um, on my other profile I've raced him as an AI driver and when I've like gone to overtake him he's trying to ram me side off the track from the side which is exactly what he's done when I've been playing with him so they've certainly got him down to a T. So I'll just 
just try and put the semi-interesting bits of the race on which is usually at the beginning when there's plenty of cars so yeah I'm trying to set the difficulty level so you can get a good enough finish that you're going to end the season at the top but also to make it a little bit of a race so at least it's not so boring that you just get straight out in front and win and also every time you overtake a car you'll get an extra car points which will level your car up quicker which you know, that's one of the aims of the game so here we are, six lap. Got all of these cars on my other profile. Uh, so all, all nine of the cars, I don't do the premiums, but all the others, I've actually tested them all standard on the first track. And I've tested like the best B and C class tunes I could get and this Hyundai across the board on all five tracks uh, was the best right so we're going to get the uh, race transmission here um, you don't necessarily have to do that but if you're sort of gearing yourself up towards um, having a decent tune or learning how to tune your cars your transmission is fairly important Um, and for what you lose with your car points if you can get that gear and dialed in nicely you'll easily make the performance back up with your acceleration and you drive out of the corners but it is it is annoying I, I really hate this car point system on the game because honestly the amounts of times you've you've got quite a high level car and then you go to do a tune and then you can't have the bits on it that you want because you ain't got enough car points. It's flipping ridiculous. So here we go. I'm using... Oh, I must have gone by. We should use Hokone Grand Prix circuit on C-Class. So you get yourself a rival's time at the same time. You get, obviously, while you're doing this as well, not only will you optimise your gearing, but obviously doing a few rivals laps, that'll get your car level a bit higher as well. So just having a little tweak up of the gears. I usually start off with the final drive ratio, and then when it starts going red on that left-hand side for your 0-60s to and 0-100, to then I'll do individual gears. So yeah, I've, done, I've just gone through it, done it like that. I know roughly... Uh, what gear I have for this but the reason I choose this track is generally certainly with lower powered cars if you're just doing most of the circuits in the game if you can get it so that you can get your absolute top speed and still slow down enough to make the corner on this track the gear in for the top end is normally about bang on for all the tracks occasionally Mugello might be a better track but that's normally on your more powerful cars sort of once you start getting maybe up to sort of R class, S class, that sort of era. Depends on the car really. But for the most part I've found the Coney to be a pretty good track for setting your gearing up to get your top speed. If you're just doing a general tune, obviously if you want to tune for each track, well then you're gonna to have to practice on each track but you know you gotta be serious at racing online if you're gonna do tunes for each one and you could put a lot of time in there and actually end up that that weren't the best car so you just wasted your time but you see there I had 139 mile an hour or whatever it was so and I've obviously unlocked another level so I'm going to use some of them car points there so if we can just get the car a little bit better I decided to keep it at C class for this one purely because if I go B class I've then got to come out of the rivals go into B class and do it that way so it's just as easy to keep it on C class for this particular setup and event I say it's all about efficiency saving time obviously you could tweak it and do a little bit more but are you really that bothered about beating AI so I've got a couple of little bits and pieces on there. Got it C-Class 500. And actually, 
this setup that we've got here would probably be okay-ish online if you weren't racing anyone too good if you're still sort of quite a low rank if you're just starting you'd probably get on okay with that that's not the best c-class setup for the car but it isn't terrible either and it's more than good enough for what we're trying to do here so i think i just showed how you just sort of tweak that up a gear in one Obviously, because I'd already got a lap time, I thought oh, I'll just skip the lap. That's the typical way. Why why you have to select skip lap, I don't know. On the older fours as I've played from years ago, it wouldn't make you do a stand and start. It'd already be like that. Because, let's face it, if you're trying to do lap times, you're not going to do a stand and start, are you? But there you go, that's another thing that the people creating fours are haven't thought logically about. Yeah, I mean, if you know, if you get what I'm doing, you can always skip this part of the video. But I was just showing there. So I've got 142 mile an hour, which with the setup we've got, and probably to be honest with C class, even if you've got a really good C class, that is about as fast as you're going to go. I did just raise the gear in one more notch on the top. We're back on the straight, and you'll see that don't quite pull the 142, sort of 140. So there you go, that was just to show you, that's how I do it. And basically with most of my tunes that are in the game, that's pretty much what I've done. So anyone could do it, provided they can get a decent drive off that last corner onto the straight. Um, but on the other hand, if you can't be asked for tuning, well it's as easy to download someone else's. And that is one of the main things I do to set my cars up. Obviously, if you're going for absolute top speed, I'll use the Le Mans, whatever one it is, that's like got the super long straight. But I don't do that many tunes that are just for outright top speed, to be honest. So there you go, beat someone else on that. Right, so that's got the, we've got the gearing set up. know what I did there oh, obviously I've done something else oh, I know what I did here oh, I just knocked the gear and back down so obviously that one where I got the decent time was the one where I was actually only doing 140 mile an hour so I've just tweaked the gear and back right we're now on the next uh, round of the series Watkins Glen there you go you can see I'm just sussing out what my time is compared to everyone else working out what difficulty level I'm going to put it at to yield the most bonuses as you can see as soon as you put the difficulty level up everyone's faster and if I'm only doing 129s and everyone else is in the 128s unless I literally put it so I'm starting at the front uh, I'm definitely not going to win it I can't remember what I did but we're going to find out any second looks as though I went for it and I decided to start in 13th where my lap time put me just to try and jazz it up a little bit I do quite like the way that the paint jobs people use in the game they let them go on there as well that sort of makes it a little bit better there you are, look at all them 10 CXPs I've just got up the side there car XP you know so even if I don't win this race because of all them overtakes that I've been doing um, that will help level the car up a lot more and if a car overtakes you and then you keep overtaking them you also still get loads more car points and the car point system is the flipping biggest ball ache of this game I'd much rather have it where you just have to pay for your bits so that you could in theory just buy a car if you've got the 
the credits, just flipping bang all the stuff on and tune it properly straight away rather than have all this messing about. Um, the way round it, like when you've got some credits, if you decide, right, I want to get an MX-5 so I can do some racing with that, get high on the score tables, then what you can do is turn all the assists on, just let the computer roll round the track for ages, that'll I think you have to press one of the buttons every 10 minutes or so, that'll get you loads of car points. But it's still a flipping ball lake, innit, having to do that. But I mean, if I get a fifth place finish here, that's a decent enough finish, that'll get me a, quite a decent amount of points. The cars, the, the, the other drivers, they're not, like, you're not going to end up with the same guy winning every time, so even if you don't always get the best finish, that isn't necessarily going to make it, so you're going to fall miles behind in the point standings. Yeah, what... There you go, I've, I've skipped it to near the end, so you can see I managed to fight my way up from 13th to 2nd. I don't think I expected to do that, to be honest. I probably expected to get 5th or 6th. There you go, over the line, second place. Decent. And that's right, so your next one's Homestead Miami. Can't remember exactly what I did here. I've got a feeling I want to use some of them car points. Yeah, so what I've done here is I've upgraded the tyre compound, which you can see is mullered what car points I'd got from that last round. Um so rather than doing any sort of engine mods or anything, I've kind of gone with the handling because that way the gearing setup I've got will that will still be valid. Whereas if you start sticking a lot of mods on there that's going to make the car faster in a straight line, well then you're going to have to go to Hakoni if you want to optimise the car and redo the gearing. So I thought rather than do that, I've got a decent uh, gearing I thought I'd just focus on the handling and use the car points up that way. So, fairly painless. Don't think I bothered changing anything. I think I actually even forgot to change the tyre pressures on this one, which if you ever change the tyre compound, uh, that resets all the tyre pressures to stock. So you actually do need to go in and redo them, but I forgot this time. Um, if you do the tyre widths though, that will keep the same pressures as what you've set. So there you go, that's a little tuning tip. Uh, I've had a look round the side of the start. And sixth. It's quite an evil track actually, this one can be. This, this one actually does take quite a bit of learning. Um, I've got the advantage that because I was driving all the cars on all the tracks to see which one was genuinely the best, I've had a decent bit of practice on all of them, so I kind of know them, but that is a still easy to make a mistake on this one. Real easy, which is one of the reasons I started as far up the front as I did, um, and then it turned out really I could have probably put the difficulty a little bit higher, or I could have started further back, because this one was fairly easy. I don't think it took me long to beat this Astra. Talking of which, car-wise, the Hyundai was definitely the best standard car tuned on all the tracks. But the Focus ran it a very, very close second on a couple of tracks um, in a couple of the standard to the tunes I had it on, and that Astra that was pretty good as well so if you didn't want to have the high Hyundai I'd say the Focus wouldn't be a bad second choice and the Astra is not bad either um, the Focus is actually more stable generally I would say that's the advantage of that so there you go I've just put the championship standings on one round left to go uh, I think on this one I focused on, 
I think I've just done more handling mods again. I don't think I've done a lot. You can see, I've, I think I did uprate the suspension, but it's just the non-adjustable. I don't think there was any need to put a different anti-roll bar on the other end. As long as you can adjust one end, you can dial it in. Always give the brakes a bit of a tweak. You can see the difference there. It's 8 foot on the 60 and naught potential difference there so it's definitely worth always giving them a little bit of a tweak Anyway, we've got to the last round, so usual bit, get difficulty, and I decided to go for kind of easier difficulty than what I should have done, but I offset that by starting in last, so I'd get my maximum overtakes, and I'd worked out, because you do get quite a lot of points uh, for a win, so even though my main rival was starting at the front he was 14 points behind me and you do get points all the way down to like I don't know, probably even last place so I thought as long as I can get probably in the top 10 even if he wins I would still win the championship so I thought I'll do it on a bit of an easier skill level and then go for getting the maximum amount of overtakes to get the car points up make the race maybe a little bit more interesting as well um, and still be able to get the win, so that's what I've done. Yeah, that was a bit, a bit dodge there. To be fair, that would have probably made somebody swear if he was online. If I'm online, I do, I do drive a little bit better than this. I don't, I don't generally try and be a rammer or anything like that. But if you do play online, you've got to bear in mind. Uh, particularly if you're braking earlier than someone else tends to, you will get the odd little taps and that from behind by people because you're just catching them out. That's not that they're necessarily trying to run you off the track, but you know, sometimes people do make it blatantly obvious they are doing it, and you know, it's up to you then. If they're not a particularly good driver and they've used you as a brake, Chances are you'll be able to catch them up and repay the favour, which I've done many, many times, even though the Forza rules state, oh, you mustn't retaliate. Well, it's a game, and I don't really care about my rating. If I'm honest, I don't, wouldn't even care if I got banned from online races, really. that's not For me, that's not really what the game is. I'm into the tuning. You know, I'll put that kept that bit on there because I thought that was a pretty slick manoeuvre going between them two cars. I was quite pleased with that. And I was on the limit there. I did think I was going to hit them to be fair, so I was a little bit banzai. I, I probably wouldn't have done that online unless one of them two cars had already sort of knocked me or done something before, then I would. But anyway... You can see I came second, so 
Yeah, easily come out in the championship in first. And I should now have a car that not only has won me that second championship, so I'll get a few extra credits for that. I should have a car that is now high enough level that if I want to put some tunes on using whichever bits I want, which is high enough level in C class, or I want to download some tunes and use other people's, you can see it was first there, then I can do it. Uh, I've also got enough credits. I'm up to 246,000, so I've got enough credits now that I can have a little bit of a choice of some of the cars that sort of top the tables and tend to win quite a lot. Uh, I think I just showed you what tune I put on there, just as an example. Obviously, I put I put my own tune on there from the other profile. You wouldn't be able to use the B-Class tune, though, I don't think. not Even though it'll say uh, you can do it, it says their required level on some of them. Uh, I don't say, but you always need a higher level than what it says because you just literally won't have enough car points to be able to get the bits. So, yeah, if you're level 20, which that car is, you can put a decent C-Class tune on it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, all that. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.